lost in the rabbit hole. Connect every emotion, experience, adventure, struggle, pain, and achievement. Know the past, feel the future, and live this moment with Nisha Harale on Niche Radio. Everyone, this is Anisha Rale on Niche Radio, and right now with us we have Dr. Ashish Gosar, a neurologist from Masina Hospital, Baikala, who's going to talk to us all about epilepsy. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Ashish Gosar. I'm a consultant neurologist and epileptologist at Masina Hospital, Baikala. Wow. Some people call it fit. Some people call it seizure. in uh, marathi they call it akdi if you go to north india they call it uh, you know uh, khechni so basically it's an event which happens suddenly where a patient may just lose consciousness fall may have jerky movements and there are different types of these seizures you know for example somebody may just uh, have some confusion for few seconds and may recover somebody may just be blank for few seconds may recover somebody may just fall and get up again that may be a different type of seizure somebody you know you might have seen someone seizing at the road side where there is a tonic clonic movement then they drop they fall then they remain unconscious so these are the common generalized tonic clonic seizures that we see then somebody you may just have jerks you know for a few seconds these are called as myoclonic uh, jerks so basically depending on the type of epilepsy i mean to say that the reason you know why this person is having different different forms of of fits can be seen so when someone has two or more attacks then we say this is epilepsy and when you witness that even that particular event is called as a seizure or a fit in a normal person in an awake person you know the brain can fires from maybe you know 10 to 12 times per second mm-hmm. now during the period of seizure the firing you can just imagine it goes into thousands and sometimes lakhs for those few seconds so now this current which is normally in the range of 10 to 12 something happens which triggers it to just increase and that is the time when you know person throws a fit now this can start from the entire brain all together or it can start from one part of the brain and then spread to the other so the patient throws you know a seizure suddenly Got and it. this is which can be genetic or hereditary or sometimes there may be no family history but in such patients the brain as such is overall normal you know you do not find any abnormality when you do the mri in these patients now these are the second patients you know who get an aura so basically what happens the, the trigger starts from one part of the brain and it is slowly slowly spreading to the other part so these are the patients who get an aura when it is you know localized to that part and as slowly slowly it is going to the other part that after a long maybe few seconds to minutes they throw a seizure so in these cases there may be an acquired cause you know there may be maybe a you know uh, there may be a small growth in the brain there may be a part of the brain which has maybe due to head injury got affected there may be some infection in some part of the brain so these we call as a secondary generalized seizures so in these cases this can be acquired and in the first case is generally where it is you know primary but there may be a family history or it may be genetic so we can define aura as a sensory fit but there are only sensory symptoms for example there may be some numbness on one part of the face you know there may be some tingling sensation on the face there may be some visual disturbances in front of the eyes there may be some abdominal discomfort so this aura is maybe the beginning of a larger fit but not necessarily that every time after the small fit the person will get a large fit so a lot of times what happens you have the aura and you become normal got it you may not throw the So in that case, this is something which generally happens with people who are on medications. Now imagine someone who is not on medicine. So he will get that aura where it is the beginning of the fit, which starts from one part of the brain. Mm-hmm. Now say that part of the brain is uh, is related to something to do with your memory or your language area. So during that aura, the person will not be able to speak, and so he will be confused. Different types of epilepsy, you know, where bright light. Loud, loud sound you know they may trigger an event so if someone is prone to trigger or maybe you know to such kind of things then maybe you can avoid, uh, avoid those things otherwise overall 
you know a, a healthy and a normal lifestyle which you would suggest to anyone is what our epilepsy patient needs to follow and lack of sleep definitely triggers epilepsy even if you have the first attack it's always good to go and meet the doctor because what happens is you need to understand that people have attacks in the night also correct so you like this is your first attack but you never know you might have had some small seizure in your sleep also and when you gave up uh, get up in the morning all you realize that you know the bed was wet or uh, you passed off in the sleep or you have a tongue bite and you are aware what happened to you so a lot of times you may feel this is your first attack but if you have the attack it's always best to go and meet a, a neurologist or even a good physician you know you can meet them they will guide you i'm sure they'll guide you what needs to be done pose a fit in front of you you know just make sure that the person lies down you make the person lie down and just turn the person laterally so that the tongue doesn't fall right the next thing you make sure is during the seizure he doesn't bang his head dead anywhere and the third thing is do not cover up you know let the person breathe if he is wearing a tie just release it let him breathe comfortably and what you can do at the most is do not put anything in his mouth do not put your hand you know in the mouth Do not give anything in the heart, uh, in the hands. You know, a hard object. The seizure will stop in maximum couple of minutes. You know, during that time, just two things: just make the person lateral so that the tongue doesn't fall, and make sure he doesn't hit himself anywhere. What you can do is maybe rub his feet for a few seconds. Now, this you need to do is because, as I said, you know, sometimes the prolonged suppression of the brain. uh you don't want that to happen so just maybe you can drop the feet for a few seconds and on most occasions the patient should regain consciousness within 10 to 15 minutes you need to understand that the a brain which has thrown off it is a tired brain you know it will take time again to come back to normal give the person may remain confused for a few minutes after waking up the person may not actually be aware about what happened to him then there may be a situation where the person may have hurt himself you know uh then there may be headache for a few minutes to up sometimes so what you need to do is just be if especially if it's your someone you know close to you just make sure you are with that person till you feel that the person is completely normal that is the first thing now if you've seen someone uh, having this attack on the road you need to do the same thing Uh, just make sure that you are there make the person sit down just be there with him till the person is completely back to the senses and the best way to assess is just ask them their name just mm-hmm. ask them their telephone number where do they stay if they answer these questions well most likely he is regained his consciousness uh, we have an epilepsy foundation there are a lot of activities carried out you know for these patients what they do is they call these patients then they sit with them they make they interact with these patients they talk to them they answer their questions they make them realize that you know they are as normal as anybody else i think best thing is you know to seek a medical help medical attention uh, there are psychiatrists there are psychologists who counsel these patients and you know make them aware that this is something which is you know in today's time as normal as any other problems you know like diabetes blood pressure the way you know you can control those problems this similarly you know you can be controlled with simple medicines and uh, they can lead a normal uh, you know life just like anybody else but the most important thing is you know to the self confidence is i think that is something you know the caregivers the family you know they need to be aware about now example if a child has a seizure you know suddenly the whole house you know they become so protective of the child you know they don't let them go out they don't let them play for example a young girl throws a seizure you know the the stress that the girl sees on the family's face you know that is what you know demotivates her you know they suddenly even you know 12 13 year old girls if they throw a seizure the family starts thinking oh how are you going to get a married later life so i think this is something which we need to be aware that you know you know you have to live in the present day don't think too much about the future you know what is going to happen to anybody tomorrow is something which is not in our hands correct what you can do is, you know what you can do is first we have to say remove the gender difference you know that is the most important thing whether it's a young boy who throws a seizure or a young girl who throws a seizure the important thing is for the family the caregivers the people around to look at it in a in a same way you know 
don't you know demotivate anyone don't start burdening her with her future and you know because the questions which you will pose to her are something which even she is not aware you know what right. will happen later life nobody knows you know so right. i think the best answer to all these questions the doctor who is treating you know he's in a way the captain of the ship where he has to take care of the the, the patient also and he has to take the family and the caregivers in confidence that this is something which is absolutely normal she will be as normal as any other girl or he will be as normal as any other boy counsel yes. them make them realize that you know that child is as brilliant as anybody else you know and not not to stop him or stop her from doing something which she loves i'm an epileptic patient myself i went through my share of depression and i fought uh, my battle um it was uh, not easy it took 5 years to get to no medications you have to believe in everything that you do you have to uh, keep doing what you're doing you have to live your life happily and move forward and not let any infection disease or anything as epilepsy also bring you down you got to live your life